Welcome back to Persona 5 Royal. Here we are on the Underground Mall, and we're gonna zip right to the hideout. Because we'll be infiltrating the palace today. I hope you all understand that our time limit is May 2nd. We basically just have to go to that castle and steal the treasure from Kamoshida, right? It's actually important to note that the time limit is not... There are a few caveats to the time limit. You actually need at least two days free to finish the palace. One to reach the end, and the other to actually do what finishes it, to avoid spoiling anything. But yeah, they're a bit vague on that the first one, but for every other one that's a little bit clearer. So actually your deadline is uh, like two days before the actual date. But wait, what even is a treasure? I want to know that before we do anything. A treasure is the physical form of the palace ruler's distorted desires. In other words, it's the core of the palace. Once we steal it, the palace will crumble. I think. Having said all that, even I don't know what Kamoshida's treasure is going to be. And where can we find it? There's no way of knowing that until we go in and find out. I mean, I'd assume it'd be right at the absolute heart of the place and under very, very heavy guard. But if I had to guess, I'd say he has it locked up somewhere in the depths of the palace. Or Morgana could say exactly what I was thinking. Uh, I think I get it now. We just gotta find the treasure, yeah? Pretty much. There's just a lot we won't know until we go in. In any case, our objective is to find the treasure's location somewhere in the palace. And since I'm following a Max Confidant Guide schedule, we have to do this all in one day. The game is really not design with that in mind, at least in the vanilla game. In Royal, they have added a few tweaks to make that a lot easier. Make sure we go about this with time to spare so we can avoid any unforeseen circumstances. Yeah, the way you're supposed to approach things is to, um, basically gradually explore the dungeon over the course of, um, the days leading up to the deadline. I expect great things from you guys. So, we have the option to hold a meeting before infiltrating. It mostly just has the party explain, uh, you know, what's going on in the story at the moment and how far you are into your infiltration. Infiltrate Palace will send you directly in. And, uh, yeah. Palaces, unfortunately, take up your daytime and also prevent you from doing most things at night because you'll be too tired. However, in Royal, there's a little more you can do at night after visiting a palace, but I'll go into that later. Damn it. Let's start our strategy meeting. So, this is kind of the generic conversation for if you haven't gone in at all. I guess Arn's trying to say there that maybe we're not quite at the right level to fully finish this, but we'll be leveling up as we uh, as we go through. Okay, meeting adjourned. I usually like to fight basically everything just just to make sure. Usually in this game, if you fight every enemy you see, you'll you'll be at about the right level for things. You don't usually need to grind a whole lot. Okay, let's go. Damn! Huh? What's up? Nothing. Uh, I was just thinking we should choose a code name for you too. Wait, you're saying her code name should just be Damn? A code name? I'm Skull. He's Joker, and that's Mona. Judging by your costume. Oh no 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 no! The simp does not get to decide her code name. I mean, she's got that tail and stuff. So, what do you think? So, some of these, like Cat Girl and Kitty Woman, it's kind of obvious what the inspiration for Arn's outfit is. In the concept art, her thief outfit was almost exactly the Arkham City version of Catwoman. So, yeah, pretty clearly, pretty clear who she's based off of. Wait! Is that what you're going to call me from now on? I am so not down with this. What do you want to be called, then? Um, something better than just a little cat. Maybe... Panther? 
That sounds pretty cool, doesn't it? Just like there's evidence Ryuji's codename was going to be different, Ahn in some internal files is referred to as Papillon, as in French for butterfly, which would imply her costume was going to be quite different too. Huh? Why? Because it sounds more... ferocious? She's a cougar. <laughs> Morgana, really? Don't call me that! More importantly, Kamoshida. Oh, right. Let's go. But first... Alright, let's start fresh and get going. It's game time from this point forward. I'll teach you guys the basics of infiltrating a palace as we go. There's another basic we need to be taught. My master would like a word with you. Yeah, this one's pretty important. The prisoner has returned. Well done. It seems you have remembered my words. You truly make it worth rehabilitating you. <laughs> I am not attempting to withhold information from you. But you are just being very vague about everything. The essence of the rehabilitation that you must complete will be explained in due time. Once you encounter allies who share your ideals and discover your place in reality... I mean, we're kind of halfway to that. Only then will I explain it all. Such a day should not be far off. This time, I wish to introduce you to the aid we are providing. Due to your potential in wielding the power of the wild card, you can handle more than one persona. Yeah, we found that out earlier. That power holds infinite possibilities. We will assist you in nurturing that potential. To that end, we must execute your persona. Wait, what? <laughs> Do not be alarmed. Personas are personalities that exist within you. Thus, you will only be discarding old personalities to have them be reborn as new ones. By discarding your old identity, you give way to a new one. Hence, we call that process execution. Think of it as the fusion of your personas. This is one of the biggest gimmicks of, um, not just Persona, but also the mainline Shin Megami Tensei series that it's spun off from. It's honestly one of the main draws of it, uh, in my opinion. And, yeah, it's- things definitely pick up once you unlock the mechanic for the first time. To start, select the first persona you wish to fuse. But here's where things actually get a little bit weird for P5. The, there was another reason why I wanted to pick up as many personas during negotiation um, in the forced arm recruitment visit. And that's because if you didn't get any personas besides the forced pixie and then also Arsene that you start with, this tutorial will force you to get rid of Arsene. It's actually kind of a pain if you like him, so uh, I wanted to avoid that. Now here's the thing, we don't need Magician and we won't be needing Hermit for a while. We do still need the Death and Lovers Arcanas because, you know, they help for Arn. And I didn't actually explain that yet, did I? Okay, so if you have a Persona of the same Arcana as a Confidant when you hang out with them, you get a 1.5 times multiplier towards their social points. So that's why we need Lovers and Death. We don't need Magician because Magician's an automatic plot one. And we don't need Hermit because- uh, we don't need Fool for the same reason. And we don't need Hermit because- Hermit doesn't unlock until way later, I'll just say. So, if we choose jack o Lantern first- Now, before you select the second persona, allow me to tell you something greatly important. Do you remember how I mentioned forming bonds with confidants? Yes, persona, 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 confidant, confidant, confidant. Personas are the power of the heart. The stronger those bonds, the stronger your personas will be. In other words, the effects of your bonds on execution, or fusion, if you will, are quite substantial. That's the Arcana Burst ability we gained from rank 1 of the Fool. When you fuse a persona that shares its Arcana with one of your bonds, it will gain great power. 
This will be a guiding principle for your forays into fusion. Try not to forget it. Moreover, there is one thing I must warn you about. You cannot create a persona that surpasses your current level. As you can see there, we can't get Saki Mitama right now, but we could get Incubus. This is because the resulting persona would be too powerful for you to handle effectively. If you want to see what happens when somebody tries anyway, uh, check out the super boss of Persona Q. Now then, check the fusion results and choose a persona that suits your stature. <sighs> yeah, I can't actually get uh, Incubus without uh, getting rid of Pixie though. Let me just see what I can make out of everything else. Bicorn, uh, that's way too high. Silky, Kelpie, Sil oh, they're, they're, everything there is too high. Yeah, so I should kind of explain how the levels work. So here's how this works. When you're fusing two personas, the game adds together the base levels of the components. Only base levels matter, which means that Arsene will be treated as level one, not three, uh, as he is here. So I select Arsene and then Pixie. So here's what happens with this. Um, we add 1 and uh, I believe Pixie's never leveled up, so Pixie is base level 2. So we add 1 and 2 and we get 3. Then every arcana plus a different arcana equals a third arcana. There's a chart for that in this game's digital manual, but basically lovers plus 4 equals chariot, and then the game looks through the list of chariot personas and chooses the one that is the closest to the average of the two base levels. Um, so yeah, we have 1 plus 2, 3, divided by 2, uh, which is 1.5. In this case, 3 is the closest to 1.5, so we get a Garfion. Now, the thing is, we actually do need a Chariot Persona, uh, and we're at rank 2 in Chariot. This is the form your new Persona is expected to take after few. So we will get a bit of an experience boost here. It's possible for them to inherit skills they normally wouldn't gain. This is what I hinted at back when I talked about Arsene. In Fusion, the two parent personas can pass down skills to the child. The more skills that the two parents have, the more, like, selectable skill slots are for skills that can be passed down. So basically, you want to fuse together personas that have as many skills as possible. In the early game, you won't get a lot of options here since you'll be stuck with a lot of non-fused personas that don't have a lot of skills. These skills and specialties are distinct from one another. Skills are traits that can be passed along through fusion. Now here's something that I actually really like about Persona 5. You'll see that that next skill level 4 is highlighted. That means that Agathion will learn this with the experience gained from Arcana Burst. Uh, I just want to see if there's another option though, because, I mean, it's just kind of a shame, because I like Arsene and he's going to learn Secunda soon, but Agathion is actually looking like a very tempting option. It is easy to get Pixies again, though. I will be needing Genbu eventually, but obviously I'm too low level for that right now. And I will be needing Mandrake, so I don't really want to get rid of Mandrake. Hmm. Actually, you know what? I I'm not going to get rid of Arsene right now. Let's go for Jack-O-Lan plus Pixie equals Incubus. This is going to mean no Arcana Burst, Looks pretty tough. because we don't have a Devil Confidant yet. Um, but uh, now, we, uh, in fact, getting Incubus now will actually be kind of helpful for certain reasons. Uh, also, so something kind of interesting, Life Drain got nerfed dramatically in Persona 5 because it's available much earlier than it usually is. Uh, so it, it only drains like 30 HP in this game. We have Dream Needle, and then we'll also learn Dormina a little later, but I can then pass down. Like Argy, Zeo, or... yeah, I want Rakunda. Defense debuffs, I personally love Rakunda. It's actually, like, legit one of my favorite skills in the entire franchise, even late into the game, because bosses usually fight alone, and just... Just debuffing their defense just drastically increases the damage they take. Uh, buffs and debuffs, if you haven't played a Shin Megami Tensei game before, are actually amazing. Its power will be nothing unusual. So, no Devil Confidant just yet, but, um, I suppose I still wish to create it. My, my. Now, whenever you do a fusion, there is a very small chance that you'll get a fusion accident and the result will be something different to what you wanted. I don't know if the first fusion, like the force tutorial fusion, can be an accident. It'd be kind of funny if it could be. But also, yeah, P5 really hammers in just how much darker it is than your average Persona game. Yeah, your Personas are just straight up, like there's no blood or anything, but they're just 
straight up guillotined. You know what? That is true. That's a true statement. <laughs> Uh yeah, Incubus is... Incubus is one of the reasons people suspect these games get M ratings in America. Ah, oh, how impressive. He's the disciple of the main reason people think they have an M rating in America, who we won't be seeing for a long time. A stronger persona has been born from the body and blood of the old. It shall be your new strength. Its worth will be made clearer when you return to the field of battle. Gather personas and bring them here. Just realized that's actually pretty much uh, Mido's catchphrase from the Shin Megami Tensei games. Gather demons and return, or something like that. Gather a great many, execute them, and continue to give birth to even stronger personas. Now, there are even more uh, reasons why I want to be fusing personas, but like, in general, personas you make through fusion are better than things you get just through negotiation. So you want to be Developing fusing as much as possible. as such will play an integral role in the stand against ruin. I'm sorry, I talked over you there. So that your rehabilitation goes well. We have a variety of rituals to choose in regard to execution. Yeah, these are the other aspects that I was going to get into. And depending on the effort you put in, our master might consider further development of new rituals. In other words, more facilities in the vault room will unlock as we keep progressing through the story. Cry your tears of joy, inmate. <laughs> your heart is steadily gaining the strength of rebellion. It seems your rehabilitation is proceeding smoothly. A joyous fact indeed. In anticipation of this, I have prepared a gift for you. I hope that you shall accept it. And just like that, full rank 2. And this gives us the third eye ability. Another uh, thing that my muscle memory has been pressing this entire time because I'm used right. to having it. <laughs> Third Eye lets you see things in both the real world and the metaverse that are normally hidden. That is a thief's skill, allowing one to tap into their sixth sense and see what is hidden in the dark. I believe you can handle it now. May you continue devoting yourself to further rehabilitation. Now then, if you have any requests, we will heed them. So, before we leave the Velvet Room, there's a few more things we can do here. We actually have the option to walk around in here, that lets us return to the metaverse. There's a, a toilet here, for some reason. Hmm? I don't really know if we should be actually using this. But uh, this does let you view some, some information here. What does it say about shadows? Listen well. Yeah, the collective unconscious is a concept in Jungian psychology. Shadows are the thoughts that humanity denies or casts aside. But yeah, this is interesting. This is why they look like knights in armor in Kamoshida's palace. They kind of got sucked in there and then got, yeah, converted to how his own um, desires saw them. And yes, shadows and personas are the same thing. Personas are simply shadows that have been tamed and, um, uh, and mastered. Of course, Persona 4 goes into that way more. Huh. Persona 5 definitely has a lot more, like, mainstream success than the others. I would definitely recommend anyone who plays this game check out the earlier games, though. Very well. Yeah, I was mentioning that. It, it basically gets uh, distorted. And yeah, I haven't actually gone over the elephant in the room yet, the fact that the shadows actually take the form of the personas in this game, making it a lot more like uh, the demons of mainline Shin Megami Tensei or Persona 1 and 2. Persona 1 and 2 actually had both demons and personas, and I still haven't played those games, so I need to... I'm not taking my own advice. I'm for, yeah, that's... Bit, bit, make myself look like a bit of a hypocrite there, but no, I will play those games one day. Uh, but yeah, 
I, I still haven't quite figured out exactly how demons and personas can coexist in the earlier games. Persona 1 and 2 are very much more mainline Shin Megami Tensei than, um, than 3 onwards. But there's actually another thing we can do in here that I did not know about for the longest time. It sounded like he was trying to say something very important, but it was uh, a little distorted. I mean, very, very, very distorted. It's me. Also, if we talk to Justine here, ah, uh, we don't really have anything we can do there. How fares your progress in our game? But here, the inmate you wish to perform an execution. We can either do two things: normal fusion, now choose, where we can choose two personas and then you know fuse them. Or fuse by results, Let us begin the search. where you'll get a list of everything you can make with what you have on hand, and you can just pick from here. This is typically the most convenient method, um, but I do like that this is also an option. Sometimes I just pick up a few things randomly in negotiation, and I just want to get rid of them, and that's what I use that for. So, but you might notice there's only dyad guillotine available, or guillotine. Here is something that I'm actually not hugely fond of in Persona 5, uh, and it carried over to mainline Shin Megami Tensei as well. There is no triple fusion in this game. The only way to like do a normal fusion is by fusing two. Three fusing three personas and beyond is exclusive to special recipes now, which we don't actually unlock until later on. Finished for now. We haven't actually got into what the what the inmate registry is though. Justine, you handle. It's actually very important, and they didn't really go over it in a tutorial yet, unless you click explanation. So this here, Read here is a list of every persona that we have obtained uh, so far. Also, we can see every persona that exists in all of the arcanas, except for the ultimate ones. Commanding it is beyond. And get a bit of a preview from them too. Like, look at this. We can see that we have a level 60 moon persona that learns uh, these skills. So every persona, it's better to search by level right now, I think, because that'll show the ones that, that I've got right now. Uh, every persona that we've had it at any point gets registered to the compendium in its default state. So for example, the Arsene in here is the level 1 Arsene we had at the start, uh, and as are all of these. But if we choose register personas... Register see, here are the stats of the registered Arsene currently, and here are the stats of the Arsene that we have at the moment. If we choose like this, this, we'll be able to overwrite the existing record of Arsene with the current one that we have. Now, you can only keep one copy of any persona registered, so if you have like two different builds on one persona, unfortunately you can only have one available for recall at any time. Speaking of recall, the here is the thing want. when it comes to uh, the registry. You have to pay a fee to resummon, like you can resummon any persona you've had before, which is great. But it costs money. And this is why we're going to need a lot of money, because sometimes, you know, we can't hold infinite personas. And sometimes we'll need to swap them out based on which confidants we're seeing at the time. So we'll need the money to, for example, pull out Pixie from the Compendium, uh, it was called that in previous games, um, when we need to hang out with Arn. We can also toggle lists to, have, to uh, take into account only the personas that we have in the Compendium. And of course, well, yeah. So, the DLC personas. These DLC personas I have because they're free and royal. If you have a DLC persona, either purchased or free, it will appear in the Compendium. This persona? And you can summon it for the first time for free. Every time after, you'll have to pay. But for example, right now, Regardless of my level, like, I could actually, if I wanted to, I could just get what you want? Asterius Picaro right now, a level 62 persona, and just breeze my way through the first dungeon. I will not be doing that. 
but I'm also not going to be going for any of the DLC personas. Like, like look, it's level 90. Level night, level 81. <laughs> yeah, still wait to dark though. I'm not going to be getting any of these because even the lower level ones, this like Kaguya, are horrifically broken by early game standards. Like, this thing shining arrows is absolutely insane. This is like casting the basic low tier bless spell on the same enemy four to, four to eight times for like the cost of only casting it twice. It's just stupid. And also, Medea Rama is way better healing than you're supposed to have access to at level 16. Uh, Divine Grace plus Medea Rama. It's just, yeah. A lot of these DLC personas are very, very overpowered. <laughs> this just makes me think it's saying Mr. Izanagi Picaro. Also, the percentage there. You actually get perks, uh, the more of a percentage of the compendium you complete. But one other thing to keep in mind for Persona 5 specifically is, uh, you can't 100% the compendium in your first playthrough. Because one Persona is New Game Plus exclusive, and then unlike the one in P4, it counts for percentage. So, yeah, I am not particularly a fan of that, but that's how it goes. You want to register it? So yeah, here for registering Bicorn, I'd only be, you know, giving it a little bit more experience. But if you press square, you, you can sure? register everything. Also, uh, you might have noticed that Wait lock here. option. Uh, if I go to buy... Where are you? So here we go. So for example, like, say that I really wanted to keep Pixie in this state registered, which may actually be a good thing because it keeps Pixie cheap. The higher the level and the better skills a persona has, the more expensive it is to resummon from the compendium. But for example, if I press square here, I'll lock Pixie. That means that if I do a register all later and I have a Pixie, it will not overwrite the Pixie because I locked it. So, yeah, anyway, I hope that all made sense. Are you finished? What? And with that, we can finally leave. No slacking off. I have business with Igor takes you back to the fusion menu while I have other business here. Let you just walk around in the velvet room. Something wrong? You were just standing around all of a sudden. And I still love how canonically the protagonist going to the Velvet Room, from the perspective of the rest of the party, just looks like them standing and spacing out, uh, like, in place. Why are you spacing out like that? It's kind of hard to tell what you're thinking sometimes. Well, I was thinking about two wardens and a man with a long nose. Let's just say he's a man of high caliber. Men of high caliber apparently guillotine their own personalities. We're counting on you, Joker. So, where do we start? Let's head to the safe room we found last time. It's in the first floor of the West Building. That's pretty close to our usual entrance. It should be a pretty decent starting point. Safe room? It'll make sense when you see it. Well, let's head out. Yeah, we can now fast travel inside of a palace. And I said this before, you can warp between safe, ro safe rooms or from a safe room to the entrance, because the entrance, again, counts as a safe room. But when you're in anywhere that is not a safe room or an entrance, you cannot fast travel. So that's why Goho M's can be useful sometimes. They can get you out of a bind and back to a safe area. Also, the Thieves Guild. This is only available, yeah, while connected online, so if you don't have a good internet connection, you may not have access to this. It's not like a huge multiplayer kind of thing or anything like that. No downsides to receiving aid. There are a few ways they can help, but they're not really massive. Also, from now on, the Velvet Room entrance will be um, at the start of the palace, so if I pick up some new personas, I could go here. Also, we can do this now. I have some. Okay, security's gone back to 40%. I think it resets after all of the tutorials. But as you can see here, the vault room is very highlighted. But also we have some exclamation marks here. Exclamation marks highlight basically anything that you can do well parkour with or interact with. Let's do it. It's gonna save here. I don't think I'll really be progressing that far into the palace in the rest of this part because I spent a lot of time discussing the velvet room. We can go back into the central hall if we really want to, though, but what the game actually wants you to do is to do this. We could go to back to the underground prison as well. There's not really much left for us down there, though. Oh. Yeah, Arn is pretty much the newbie here. Well. Which 
resting and plotting. I mean, I guess a lot of thieves need a place like that. Yeah, we can now use the consult option. I want to actually do this at every safe room because the conversations for consult are actually unique for the first time you visit each one. Oh. Okay, that's nice. This will restore SP, but only within a safe room. I think that's actually royal only. Yeah, healing IV, you can buy that from uh, Takemi. So I'm going to save that for an absolute emergency because, oh boy, our SP, we're going to have to stretch our SP very far. So let's go, how's our progress? Hey. This is amazing! What? Oh, okay then, so uh, we kind of already heard this a little bit in the Velvet Room. <laughs> and yeah, Morgana's basically saying, I'm going to give you a, a, a little bit of long-winded exposition here. At least he warned you in advance. Yeah, this comes from Carl Jung's idea of the, hu the collective unconscious and the fact that there are certain ideas that are kind of universal across all humans. Hmm. Like, the idea of sort of, like, mother and father figures, or other things like that. Or the idea of mentors and teachers. Hmm. Yeah, so in a sense, they're all kind of victims here too. Guess these places are kind of like individual bubbles floating in the collective unconscious that Whoa. particularly, you know, strong-willed people, in this case strong-willed for all the wrong reasons, kind of create these places and then draw a lot of shadows into them. <sighs> in a sense, if you played Persona 4, they're kind of similar to the party member dungeons in Persona 4, but they do work a little differently. What are your thoughts? So yeah, you can use items to heal, uh... Okay, okay actually I wasn't quite done, because I wanted to do, uh, how well. is everyone. Let's talk to the team, then how's everyone. Okay. Basically, everyone here will talk about how much HP and SP they have left. What are your thoughts? But okay, sometimes in addition go. to the consult, you'll also have party members who have something to say if you're just walking around the safe room, like Ryuji does here. <laughs> And that's all he has to say here. So, yeah, now we're at a new location. Let's go ahead and save. And I think I'll just continue, okay. like, one room in. I'm not going to go too far, but I do want to just show off a little bit. Now then. Okay, we've got uh, some more infiltration tools. We didn't even need to craft those. Three smoke screens, one vanish ball, and uh, yeah, now we can hit ice weaknesses if we don't have it. And yeah, nobody in our party has ice skills right now, so that freeze spray could be useful. Thief assist lets you use things like smoke bombs and also Goho M. Also, you can use it to perform auto recover. Um, I prefer to heal from the menu because it means it's easier to conserve SP that way, but it can be kind of nice sometimes. Yeah. Um, I've actually seen some speedruns use smoke screens to clip into the floor. This is generally a fairly well-designed game, but there are a couple of bugs like that. I don't like those, like, legs of ham roasting there. It almost looks as if they're human. Okay, Mandrakes are back. Something that I haven't actually showed before is if you press the R1 button... Okay, that's actually a little different to what I expected. If you have anything that can hit their weakness, you'll automatically uh, switch over to that persona. Not permanently, though. Again, it's not permanent until I'm you actually use done. an attack. Uh, if you don't have anything, you'll be told you can't hit the weakness. I guess I can try Dream Needle. Ah, <laughs> uh, that was about what I expected. Okay, Ryuji's next. Uh, I suppose I can just slingshot you. Because Arn has these things weakness. Though against things this weak, you probably shouldn't be spending too much SP, especially since I already have Mandrake. But, what I would kind of like to do is maybe get a little bit of money. 
So we are apparently supposed to have five, uh, 50,000 yen at least by the time we leave this palace according to guides. So we're going to have to fundraise quite a bit. Usually the yen that you get from negotiating is a little bit better than what you get from winning a battle normally. But that was kind of pathetic. You do get a higher chance of getting more money. Um, the, um, oh, no, I got money from the other one. The other one dropped more money than this, that one gave me with negotiation. But anyway, yeah. Um, the, like, seriously, I wonder if those actually are supposed to be human, and if so, that's horrifying. Focus. Um, also, yeah, the strength of the enemy is shown by the color they're in, but like, what I was saying is, um, if you have the persona already in your party, you'll get more money. Also, though, yeah, this is actually what you should be doing against weak enemies here to conserve your SP. Don't waste your time with them unless you need to negotiate. Okay. But, um... But, yeah. Also, I think the amount of money you get is determined by your luck stat. I know your luck stat influences how much money confused enemies give you. But I really wanted to at least show this off. Because this is a very key gameplay mechanic. Now then. Oh wow, a very, very key gameplay mechanic. I actually thought this would be something different. I'll reveal your true form. I have a lot to say about this because this actually changed quite a bit in Royal. Okay, I'll show you an example first. You better watch closely. Use this opportunity to baton pass and swap your turn with someone else. Okay. This is a new feature to Persona 5 that you can do with your one more. Instead of using it yourself, you can pass the one more to another party member. This is great if, like, you don't have any enemies that you can hit the weakness of, but somebody else does. And also, the recipient will have their attack power and healing ability increase. And the more that you pass in the same turn, the better this effect gets. And if you pass to all four people, the fourth person will be able to use any skill for free. This, I believe, is Royal exclusive. But Todd Pass actually got buffed in Royal, uh, and it's definitely amazing in this version. Okay, so uh, sometimes you have to be a little bit tactical though, because I know Arn has that thing's weakness. Uh, Ryuji has that thing's weakness, so for Joker, I'll use the gun on Pixie. Sometimes here it's good if you actually uh, relent there and use the baton pass. So number three, I can zero the the. I no longer have to kill. Uh, call you dirty to your own beast. And then we baton pass to Arn. Yeah, you cannot baton pass to somebody who has already received the baton that turn. Again, you have to be a bit tactical about it sometimes. You can easily kind of step on your own toes if you hit weaknesses in the wrong order. That's why I really like this. It is admittedly very powerful and maybe a bit too good in some people's opinion in Royal, but it, it does make every battle a bit of a puzzle as to how you can baton pass as best as possible. Like, that was a, a full-on one-shot there. And now, I really hope this finishes them off. Because we haven't seen Arn's finisher yet. Here we go, here's Arn's finisher. <laughs> and yeah, all of those are still in English, even the Japanese version. So yes, it actually did say, OMG, we are so awesome. Nice going. Now, one of the biggest reasons Baton Pass changed so much in Royal is that in vanilla P5, Baton Pass was actually tied to your confidants. You had to unlock it by getting every party confidant to rank 2. This meant that, I think like for the entirety of the first palace, Arn would not be able to use Baton Pass, so... Unless I was wrong, unless Arn got, gets it earlier. Uh, also, you didn't even get the Baton Pass tutorial in Royal until the second palace. Also, we can steal things now. Uh, if you see an item that's highlighted in Golden when you're using uh, your... Uh, thief sense, I guess, then you can steal it. Anyway, I'm going to head back to the safe room now. I'll do the rest of my progression a little later. Oh, that guy's kind of onto me, isn't he? Nothing to see here. Some steel objects don't actually give you anything. 
don't worry, you will not alert enemies, like, by making I'll noise unless you, like, form. get close to them. So breaking, like, pots and stealing things will never alert them. So yeah, Arn's machine gun has a lot of ammo, but you cannot choose who it hits. It targets random enemies per shot. Oh hey, it actually killed everything, nice. I thought it would only kill one of them, and in fact, if I got unlucky, it might not even have done that. <laughs> it's funny how 10 experience actually looks good at this point. Getting ever closer to that elusive zero, um, security meter. Why not? I kind of want to fight one thing in here. Hello. And yeah, that didn't work because I wasn't behind it, uh, and I'm not at zero. Uh oh. Oh! Oh! Oh my! I'm so. Oh, holy crap! I'm so glad this happened. I'm sorry, Ryuji, that I'm saying that I'm taking delight in your misery, but. This is a mechanic that is so rare, you are very unlikely to see this outside of the extreme early game, because uh, anything after the first palace, you're generally too strong for this to ever happen to you. So, if a party member gets knocked down by the enemy, you will sometimes enter into hostage negotiation. Uh, again, this is very rare, and I am so glad I chose to fight this thing, because I actually got to show this. I didn't... Like, I honestly thought there was a chance that I would go this entire playthrough without ever getting a chance to see this mechanic. It's, it is really that rare. There's an achievement for doing it uh, in the vanilla game, and it's actually quite a rare achievement. So yeah, when an ally has been taken hostage, you can request help from the Thieves Guild to rescue them without fail if you're connected to the internet. Otherwise, you'll have to acquiesce to the enemy's demands, very Shin Megami Tensei style. You can only request help a certain number of times, but yeah. Really, this is the only real thing that the thie that the Thieves Guild is actually good for, honestly. So I don't really feel bad about using it. So, okay. He wants 79 yen for Ryuji. If you can't meet the demands, then the enemy will just, like, one-shot your party member. So, um, yeah, that can be bad depending on the situation. Uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and call the Thieves Guild. Really? Really? I was hoping that I wouldn't get any any person with a, with a, uh, a, a name, but like that, but... Uh. So, yes. Uh, Ruji has been rescued by a very immature person who has no sophistication. And now, you die. So, hopefully that won't happen again through the rest of this infiltration. But I am glad I got to show that at least once. Because, uh, like, again, like I, can't, I cannot stress enough that that's actually a mechanic that you are very, very unlikely to see. Because, uh, cause, yeah, like, it's really just the first palace. Uh, after the first palace... That almost never happens. Can rest here. But yeah, if an enemy gets a critical with a physical attack, then they'll get a one more. Oh hey, Arn can talk now. Mm. But with that, now I will end this part. Uh, we've covered quite a lot of things here, one thing I never expected to be able to cover. So I'll see you all next time when we actually progress further into the, the West Building. It's not the West Wing, because this isn't Beauty and the Beast. See you all then. <laughs>